Well, hello, scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And welcome to our usual monthly Q&A session. And, well, I guess I need to address the elephant in the room. No, not me. Um, the fact that I do not appear to be in my Florida lab in this video. Yes, that's true. I am not. I am in Arizona for a little while. Yeah, Toto, I don't think we're in Florida anymore. I don't remember seeing any mountains on the horizon in Florida. Beautiful morning here. Nice and cool. Yeah. I love this place. And off to the north here, this looks like a lovely backdrop for a video. I don't know. Little cabin in the woods in Arizona, getting away from the terrible rain and flooding in Florida for a while. It has been the rainy season from hell down there, and my lab is underwater. Um, I haven't been able to do much. And if you've seen my last video that I put out, you know that I'm out west because I filmed that in Albuquerque at Surplus City. So yeah, I'm out west for a little while, although by the time this video comes out, I will probably be either back home or on my way home. So, got to be back home pretty soon and get back to work. I may be doing it in waders, but I'll get back to work on some projects I need to do. We'll talk a little bit about those projects. Um, some questions that have come up with those recent projects. And um, also we'll talk about some upcoming projects I've got and videos that are going to come out in the future. That I think you'll be interested in, so hang around for that. So, you know, if you've been waiting for Part 7 of um, Joven's Palladium Strips or Part 3 of Easy Gold from E-Waste, well, this, the reason it hasn't come out yet is because I'm out here, okay? And not there standing in uh, ankle-deep water trying to film. So, uh, it'll be a little longer before those come out, sorry, but they will be coming out. I will work on, uh, as soon as I get back, um, and uh, if the weather allows, um, I will... Uh, Try to finish up uh, Joven's Palladium, put that to bed, try and uh, reduce the uh, palladium ammonium chloride, the red salt I got out of his strips, reduce that to metal. Now there's two different ways I could do that, and I've been sort of debating in my own mind how I really want to do it. The easy way would be to put it all in a quartz dish and put it in my um, home-built electric compelling oven and heat it up and let all of the ammonium chloride sublime away and we just leave palladium sponge metal. I've done that before, back when I was processing my stock pot. That's how I got the palladium out of it. And it works pretty good. The thing I'm a little concerned about is that um, this palladium is probably still kind of polluted with some copper, maybe some other base metals, maybe some nickel, maybe some other stuff. So um, I'm trying to get it as pure as I can. And um, what I'm thinking about doing is redissolving the red salt, uh, filtering it really well, and then um, reducing it to palladium metal using ammonium formate. And then I'm thinking that um, a lot of the impurities are going to stay behind in the liquid as the metal comes out of solution. So I'm thinking about doing that. May do that instead. I have some formic acid. Ammonia is easy enough to come by. So I may make up some ammonium formate and try doing it that way. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. And if you have any experience with this, I'd be all ears to hear any advice you might have. I really haven't done the ammonium formate thing before. Kind of dabbled a little bit, but, you know, it'll be, it'll be kind of a first. But I'm hoping that will leave a lot of the impurities in the solution, and I'll get purer metal out that way. Uh, let's see, I talked with Joven about this. Uh, we've talked back and forth a little bit, you know, up to six videos on this series now. And um, he's had comments on all of them, and we've chatted a little bit. Um, he's going to use straight aqua regia when he processes his strips. And he's told me that he's got a whole bunch of them stockpiled, and he'll get more in the future. He's a lucky man. Let me tell you, I don't know where he gets that stuff, but uh, that's a lot of palladium. But uh, he's going to use straight aqua regia, so he won't have the issues that I had using poor man's aqua regia and be really heavy-handed with the sodium nitrate, where I had a lot of um, sodium chloride precipitate out. Yeah, so he's he's going to do it with nitric acid. Apparently, you know, I I don't know who can get nitric acid and who can't. It's illegal in a lot of countries to uh, buy it, to possess it. 
So, uh, you know, when I'm doing stuff, I always assume, okay, the people who are going to try and do this, they might not be able to have access to nitric acid. Let me do it with poor man's nitric. Jovan says it's not a problem for him. He can get nitric acid. He's not worried about the cost or anything. So, good for him. Um, I think he'll have a lot less trouble getting the, uh, the palladium out of his strips than I did. All right, so... Um, this sort of uh, leads into another little thing. Speaking of Aqua Regia, um, my friend Richard, um, he's a scrapper who lives near me. We've actually met a couple of times, and we, we chat a lot. He wants to know if AR has a shelf life, if Aqua Regia has a shelf life. And um, the problem is he dissolved a bit of gold in it, but um, it's not very much. You know, he doesn't want to drop that little bit of gold out he wants to save the aqua regia and uh, use it in the future to dissolve more gold off stuff. And then, once it's good and concentrated, he wants to uh, drop the gold out. So he's like, does it have a shelf life? Can I just add a little bit of extra nitric acid to it before I use it again and then keep using it until I'm ready to drop the gold out? And yes, Richard, you can do that. Um, you just have to be careful that you aren't evaporating away too much of the hydrogen chloride that's dissolved in it. You know, you got muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid, whichever you want to call it. It's basically hydrogen chloride gas dissolved in water is what it is. And that gas will escape from the water over time and um, your, your acid gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Especially if you're heating it during the process of dissolving the gold off stuff. Um, you're really going to lose a lot of that hydrogen chloride gas out of your aqua regia. So you can reuse it. I would recommend keeping it tightly sealed in a tightly sealed container that can handle the acid, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, put maybe a little bit of nitric acid in it uh, to sort of rejuvenate it before you reuse it. You might even want to put a little splash of hydrochloric acid in it to rejuvenate it before you reuse it. But yes, I don't see a problem with um, reusing it that way. You know, storing it and then reusing it until you think you've got enough gold dissolved in it to actually bother with precipitating it out. So, yeah. Go ahead with that. I think it's a good plan. Okay, I know a lot of you are clamoring to see episode 3 of Easy Gold Recovery. Um, where I've got all of those gold-plated IC chips. And I'm sure there's some lovely gold bond wires inside them, too. I think there's a fair amount of gold there. Yes, I want to get to that, too, but, of course, well, I'm 3,000 miles away, so it's going to be a while. Also, I want to finally put Jovan's Palladium Project to bed before I tackle that. I told you in last month's Q&A episode this stuff was going to come out out of order, and that's the way it is, you know? Um... You know, we had uh, some several episodes of Joven stuff. We had some Easy Gold Recovery. Uh, we're going to have some more episodes of Joven stuff. Then we'll get back to the Easy Gold Recovery. Uh, it's just a lot easier for me than to try and film everything in chronological order and release it that way. Um, sometimes I just need to work on other stuff, you know. Life gets in the way. But yes, episode 3 will be coming out. Um, I keep getting more boards in that have gold-plated IC chips on them. Um, sooner or later, I just need to process what I've got, you know. And I'm going to do that, like I said, after I put Jovid's stuff to bed, weather permitting down there in Florida. Um, so, we'll get on that. Alright, I talked to Johnny the other day, the fellow from Finland with the 80 kilos of gold-plated pins. Remember that video? I got a little crap about that. Uh, but I admitted up front, it was kind of clickbait. You know, I don't have 80 kilos of gold-plated pins from him. He has 80 kilos of them over in Finland, all right? Although we did talk, and he corrected me on a couple of minor points. Um, he, he doesn't have 80 kilos of that representative sample he gave me. He only has 40 kilos of pins like that. He's got 40 kilos of a different kind of pins, too. So, what a terrible problem to have, you know. 40 kilos of this, 40 kilos of that. Anyway, so anyway, uh, the other half is something different. But still, I think it's kind of amazing to have depopulated enough boards to have 80 kilos of gold-plated pins, even if they fit into several different categories. That's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of scrapping. That's a lot of work, Johnny. I, 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 I'm impressed. 
Um, Johnny also said he appreciated the advice and comments that came in on that video. Um, people telling him he should just sell the stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, and I thought, you know, that you might get your most value for your money for that, too. I told him that. And, um, well, he just wants to, he wants to process it, you know? He wants to process it. He's a true scrapper. I, 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 I respect that. He wants to process the stuff and get the gold. Um, it's not just about the money for him. He's having fun at this. So, hey, more power to him. So, um, we'll see if we can come up with a way, um, some suggestions for him on how to process it. Uh, there was some talk about possibly shipping it over for me to process if I can come up with a way for him to do it over there, he can do it that way. So we'll see what what the future holds. I, uh, that's another project I've got, you know, in the future. I need to uh, process his representative sample and try and get a yield number for him so he knows about how much gold he can expect to get out of the 40 kilos, not 80, 40, of pins like the ones he sent me. So... That's, that's something that's upcoming in the future. We'll talk more about upcoming videos here in a couple minutes. Uh, yes, that last video I released, which I filmed in Albuquerque at uh, Surplus City, um, people say, what do you mean you get as much money for the steel as you do for everything else? You know, the precious metals and whatnot. The copper, you know, all the rest of it, the wire, the, the, the whatnot. Well, it's true. It's true. Think of it this way. All the e-waste that has precious metals in it comes, usually, in a steel box, in a steel case. And that steel case, even though, you know, it's worth pennies per pound, they pile up. And, you know, I will take a ton, two tons of steel to the scrapyard and walk away with hundreds of dollars of cash in hand. And, you know, it takes a lot of effort to make a couple hundred dollars of gold or silver or copper. Um, but the steel, you don't have to do much to it. I mean, you strip all the other stuff out of it, then I just pile it on my trailer. Pile it on my trailer. Pile it on my trailer. Trailer's full, take it to the scrapyard, get handed a big wad of cash, you know? Steel, don't ignore the steel. I mean, it's easy. It's it's super easy scrapping. You you don't have to process it. You just gotta haul it. That's it. Um, you know, wire. You, you gotta sort it. You gotta strip it if you want to get your your best money for it. Uh, gold and silver actually has to be extracted and purified from the stuff. Platinum and palladium. Don't get me started on how complicated that is. You know, but to steal, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy money. Uh, you just, you know, you need a few things. You need some space to let it accumulate because it's not worth going to the scrapyard unless you've got a thousand pounds or more of it. It's just not worth it. So you got to have space to let it accumulate. You have to have an understanding wife who's going to let you have that space to let it accumulate and not be on your case all the time about it. A trailer is nice. A trailer is nice. Big truck or a trailer. Um, big truck and a trailer better. Um, and a strong back for unloading, loading and unloading the trailer, you know, and, and then boom, easy money. And, you know, it's not just the e-waste, um, that comes in steel boxes. All your appliances do, uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, I'll be driving to the scrapyard with a load of steel. And I drive through pretty nice neighborhoods on the way to the scrapyard sometimes. And they'll be throwing out stuff like, oh, I don't know, wine refrigerators, chest freezers, um, who knows what and you know I'll just pull over and throw that stuff on the trailer with my other scrap um, what did I get the other day a nice wrought iron bench I actually can oh, the uh, hummingbirds are are having a little tay to tay over there there's a hummingbird feeder behind the camera <laughs> and uh, yeah they're they're having a little fight around the uh, feeder but uh, yeah so what was it? It was, it was like a, a wrought iron... It wasn't a bench. It was something else. But I thought about keeping it, repainting it, and selling it. But I said, nah, we'll just throw it on the trail and take it to the scrapyard. I'm heading that way anyway. So, you know, you can you can get steel. Easy. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. People throwing out steel everywhere. Don't ignore it. It's easy, easy money. So, yes, that's actually true. Um, what I said. To get the maximum value out of your e-waste... Don't ignore the steel case as it comes in, okay? 
Okay, so upcoming projects. Well, we talked about uh, Johnny's um, representative sample of his 40 kilos of pins. So that's coming up. Um, I also have quite an accumulation of tantalum capacitors. So, um, actually a buddy of mine was telling me he's found a place that will buy them. But uh, the, the price seemed awfully low to me. So I think, I think in true scrapper uh, refiner fashion, I think instead of selling them, I think I'm going to process them and get the silver out. So, yeah. So tantalum capacitors, that's coming up. And um, another project I've got coming up is uh, silver from fuses. I have heard that some types of fuses have silver in the, in the uh, element that burns out to uh, protect you if you've got an overcurrent. Uh, some do, some don't. So it would be interesting. I have a fair collection of um, fuses that I've accumulated over the years and that my buddy Jim has been sending me too. So maybe we can uh, process some of them, tear them apart, get the elements out of them, and see which ones are silver and which ones aren't for future reference. Uh, so I'll know when I'm scrapping stuff that, okay, these fuses, they don't have any silver in them. Don't have to worry about that. These fuses do have silver in them. Okay, I need to I need to process that, you know. So just for future reference, and I'll show you which ones are which too in a video, so you'll know when you're out there scrapping in the wild and you get fuses. Okay, well I guess that's about all I've got for this month. Just a just a quick Q and A session from out here on my lovely Arizona ranch, and uh, be back in Florida soon, and get back to work on these projects we talked about, and get some more videos released. And I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll see those future videos. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Bye.